By the early 2000s, North America's transit landscape was changing in ways that the big 40-foot buses couldn't always handle. In dozens of small towns, suburbs, and regional systems, agencies were finding themselves caught in a difficult middle ground. The heavy-duty 40-footers were too much bus for narrow streets, light ridership, and tight terminals. Yet the cheaper cutaway vans, those boxy bodies bolted onto truck frames, were wearing out too fast. With only a 7- to 10-year service life, they couldn't deliver the durability or ride quality that passengers and operators expected. That gap was especially clear in Canada, where BC Transit in British Columbia became the voice of a growing demand. They needed something in between, a bus short enough to weave through small downtowns and winding suburban routes, but still built to the 12-year heavy-duty standard that federal and provincial funding programs required. In other words, a bus that behaved like a full-sized transit coach, but in a 30 to 35-foot package. The timing was no accident. By then, many fleets were stuck running older 30-foot models that had been pushed well past their prime. Maintenance costs were climbing, fuel efficiency was lagging behind newer engines, and reliability was becoming a daily headache. Agencies could see the future clearly enough. They needed a new generation of mid-size, heavy-duty buses that could stretch a dollar without compromising service. That need would set the stage for a fresh name to enter the market. Vicinity. The answer to that call came from a new name in the industry. Grande West Transportation Group, founded in Canada, set out with a clear mission to build the kind of bus that BC Transit and similar agencies were asking for. It wasn't about reinventing the wheel. It was about filling a gap that the major builders like Gillig and New Flyer weren't paying much attention to. At first, Grande West didn't have the resources to construct buses at home. Instead, the company partnered with Yaxing, a Chinese builder, to produce the first units overseas. It was a practical choice. Manufacturing costs were lower, and it allowed Grande West to move quickly from concept to reality. What mattered was not the passport of the factory, but whether the product could stand up to the demands of a North American heavy-duty duty cycle. From the beginning, the design philosophy was straightforward. Compact dimensions, a low floor for easy boarding, and the durability to last 12 years in daily service. Agencies didn't want another lightweight shuttle that would rattle itself apart in half that time. They wanted something closer to a scaled-down version of a full transit coach. Visually, the bus looked different from the familiar North American shapes. Its boxy outline, large windows, and two-door layout gave it a distinct Asian-European flavor. To some, it seemed foreign. To others, it was refreshingly modern. Either way, the vicinity didn't look like anything else on the street, and that was exactly the point. When the first vicinity models rolled out, the numbers told their own story. The lineup offered three lengths, 27.5 foot, 30 foot, and 35 foot versions. Of these, the 27.5 foot model was built in smaller numbers, while the 30 foot and 35 foot buses quickly became the mainstay. With a standard width of 102 inches and a height in the 10 to 11 foot range, the vicinity fit comfortably within North American transit dimensions while still carving out its own niche. Passenger capacity depended on the configuration. Most coaches carried between 24 and 30 seated riders with room for a total of 50 to 60 passengers when you counted standees. For agencies, that meant a genuine transit bus, something that could manage rush hour crowds without overloading, but still remain nimble enough for routes where a 40-foot bus felt out of place. Inside, the layout followed the modern low-floor formula. Two wide doors, front and rear, made for quick boarding and exit. A dedicated space for wheelchairs ensured full ADA compliance, another box that transit managers could tick with confidence. The large windows, a holdover from the original design cues, made the interior feel airy and open. Perhaps the greatest advantage came in maneuverability. 
The shorter wheelbase and tight turning circle made the vicinity especially suited to suburban loops, small town streets, and community shuttle routes. It was a bus designed to go where the big ones struggled, but without giving up the durability or comfort of a full-scale transit coach. Beneath the vicinity's modest exterior sat a powertrain, chosen to balance reliability, efficiency, and long-term cost. At the heart of most models was the Cummins ISB, later branded as the B6.7, a diesel engine familiar to mechanics across North America. Its reputation for durability made it the natural standard, and agencies appreciated knowing that parts and service were widely available. For systems looking to reduce emissions or tap into local fuel supplies, a CNG option using the Cummins B6.7N, earlier known as the ISB6.7G, was also offered. Transmission choices gave agencies another fork in the road. Many early orders were equipped with the Voith DIWA Automatic, a unit praised for its smooth shifts and long service life. Drivers and maintenance crews alike often described the Voith as forgiving, a transmission that could handle the stop-and-go grind of transit duty without constant headaches. But in 2015, Vicinity began offering the ZF Ecomat and later the Ecolife series. On paper, ZF promised improved efficiency and advanced electronics. In practice, feedback was mixed. Some operators noted harsh shifting, higher maintenance costs, and quirks in the retarder system. It didn't take long for a debate to flare. Voith loyalists versus those willing to give ZF a chance. Still, no matter which drivetrain an agency chose, the vicinity carried a clear advantage over a 40-foot bus. With a smaller engine bay and lighter overall weight, it consumed less fuel mile for mile giving smaller transit systems the chance to stretch their budgets without giving up the professional-grade feel of a heavy-duty bus. For any bus builder hoping to be taken seriously in North America, there is one gatekeeper that cannot be ignored, the Altoona Test. Located in Pennsylvania, the federally-sponsored program puts new transit buses through grueling trials, pounding them over rough tracks, slamming the brakes, cycling doors, and racking up thousands of simulated service miles. It isn't just a box to tick. It is the difference between being seen as a heavy-duty transit bus or dismissed as a lightweight shuttle. When the vicinity entered Altoona, it carried the weight of those expectations. Agencies had grown weary of cutaway vans that shook themselves apart after only a few years. To earn credibility, Grande West needed a passing grade on the full 12-year duty cycle. And it delivered. The results proved that the vicinity could stand shoulder to shoulder with the established players, matching the durability standards set by the likes of Gillig and New Flyer. That technical validation was only half the battle. In 2017, the company achieved another milestone. Buy America certification. For U.S. transit systems, this was a turning point. Federal Transit Administration funds, critical for most local agencies, could now be used to purchase the vicinity. Suddenly, a Canadian newcomer with overseas production routes had a real path into the American market. From that moment forward, the bus was no longer just a regional experiment. It had crossed the threshold into the mainstream arena of North American public transit. As the industry turned toward zero-emission transit, Vicinity knew it couldn't stand still. In the early 2020s, the company unveiled the Lightning EV, its all-electric take on the mid-size formula. The idea was simple but powerful. Give small communities and regional systems a compact bus that fit their streets and their budgets, but without the tailpipe. For towns that wanted to go green without committing to a full fleet of 40-foot electrics, the Lightning promised a practical alternative. The first production runs carried battery modules sourced from BMW's i-Series, a clever way to tap into proven automotive technology. Soon after, Vicinity secured a supply partnership with Proterra, one of the most respected names in heavy-duty battery systems. Depending on the order, packs ranged from 168 to 252 kilowatt hours enough to deliver a usable range of roughly 150 
to 185 miles. For most community routes, loops, circulators, and suburban feeders, that was more than sufficient to cover a full day's work before plugging in. Driving the wheels was a Dan Foss Editron electric drive train, engineered for the stop-and-go rhythm of transit service. Charging came via standard DC fast charge with refill times between two and three hours depending on the battery size. For managers watching the shift to clean fleets, these numbers made the Lightning a serious contender. More than just another option on the order sheet, the Lightning E-Fee became the company's flagship product for a new era. In the growing competition for zero-emission contracts, Vicinity's compact electric bus offered something different, a balance of scale, accessibility, and affordability that larger builders often overlooked. By the time the Lightning E-5 joined the lineup, the Vicinity name was already well-established on both sides of the border. In Canada, BC Transit became its biggest showcase, fielding dozens of 30-foot and 35-foot models across towns large and small. For many riders in British Columbia, the compact bus with the big windows and low floor quickly became a familiar sight on community routes that larger coaches couldn't easily serve. In the United States, the footprint was smaller but significant. One high-profile deployment came at the Brooklyn Navy Yard in New York, where a fleet of vicinity buses shuttled workers and visitors through the sprawling industrial campus. Elsewhere, universities, medical centers, and smaller transit systems picked up the model as a shuttle solution. Agencies that needed a real transit bus, not just another cutaway van, but couldn't justify a 40-foot heavyweight. Distribution in the U.S. was handled by ABC Companies, a longtime player in the motor coach market. To meet Buy America requirements and reassure potential customers, Vicinity opened an assembly facility in Ferndale, Washington. This plant handled final assembly and finishing, giving the buses the domestic content needed for agencies spending federal dollars. On the ground, agencies found the vicinity to be what it promised, a cost-effective mid-size bus with a full 12-year duty rating. Maintenance was simpler than with cutaways, fuel costs were lower than with 40-footers, and the turning circle made life easier for drivers navigating tight routes. For many transit managers, it was a practical fit, proof that a bus didn't have to be big to be taken seriously. Looking back, the vicinity carved out a place in transit history that had been left vacant for decades. For years, agencies had only two choices, run a full-size 40-foot bus on routes that didn't need it, or settle for a cutaway that would shake apart before its time. The vicinity filled that mid-size heavy-duty gap, proving that a 30- or 35-foot transit coach could be just as legitimate as its bigger brothers. In doing so, it gave managers an alternative beyond the Gillig 29-foot or the Alexander Dennis MD-35, broadening the toolkit for systems with diverse needs. But no story comes without debate. On the technical front, one of the loudest arguments centered on transmissions. Drivers and mechanics often drew battle lines between Voith and ZF. Voith fans praised the DIWA for its smooth shifts and toughness. While critics of ZF recounted hard gear changes, higher maintenance costs, and electronic quirks, for many, the question of which gearbox is better became part of the vicinity's identity. Then came a bigger challenge, business survival. In late 2024, Vicinity Motor entered receivership, raising serious concerns about warranties, spare parts, and the company's long-term future. Agencies that had embraced the bus suddenly found themselves wondering what would come next and whether the Lightning EFI would survive in a rapidly shifting marketplace. Still, the legacy is more than a balance sheet. For riders, operators, and drivers, the vicinity remains a memory of a compact bus that was tough enough to carry a 12-year duty cycle, yet small enough to slip down streets a 40-footer couldn't. It stood as a signpost in the transition from diesel to electric. If you've ever ridden or driven a vicinity, especially one with a Voith or ZF transmission, share your experience in the comments. Did it live up to its promise, 
or leave you wishing for something different. And don't forget to like and subscribe so we can keep these stories alive and keep the conversation rolling about the buses that shaped our streets.